I used to be an accountant. I used to be a CPA before, you know, I started house flipping before I started recently. So you'll notice when you start using recently, it's very data driven. That was kind of always our intent for my business, my particular business. I don't use any other platform outside of recently, not even for data or anything for data. I use ballpoint marketing. My name is Sharad. I am the owner and founder of Free Simply. Just a little background about myself. I invest in Northwest Indiana. I live in Carlsbad, San Diego area, North San Diego, but I invest in Northwest Indiana right outside of Chicago. We do primarily fix and flip to majority. I'm right now with the higher interest that we're doing, I would say 50% of deals we do are retail flip. The other 50 are turnkey properties. Turnkey properties for anyone who doesn't know, we basically take, it's a fix and flip instead of selling to a homeowner we sell to an investor. Uh, so we rehab, rent it out and sell to an investor. And I also own a property management company. So we manage the property in-house. So that's that's primarily been our business. Uh, but now with the higher interest rate, we're doing, I would say 50% retail flip, 50% turnkey properties. But our preference always is turnkey properties if we can get those just because we have in-house property management company. So it just makes it super simple for us. Uh, we do about 20, 25 flips a year. Uh, and primarily we use direct mail, PPC, paper lead. It's I have a love and hate relationship. I love it when I get a deal, but it doesn't happen often enough. But most of the time I hate it just because the market that we invest in, most of the PPL leads you have to buy for the entire county. And there's like one major city in our county that we don't do any business in. Um Unfortunately, you can do that. But John on this call, he's really good with PPL. So if you want to uh, learn more about it, he was on uh, one of our calls a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's in our help.recently.com. You should definitely check it out. That was a great call. So cool. All right, guys. If uh, if you guys can have your uh, videos on, makes the call a lot more interactive. I get to see all you good looking people. So, you know, makes it. I have a, I have a face built for radio and a voice for <laughs> not tv not radio and still i'm showing up here <laughs> all right guys the purpose of this call is to talk about uh how to track your kpis so before we get into that I, you know i want to kind of play that i used to be an accountant uh, i used to be a cpa before you know i started house flipping before i started recently so you'll notice when you start using recently it's very data driven um you know that was kind of always our intent so um, for my business, my particular business, I don't use any other platform outside of recently, not even for data or anything for data. Um, I use um, ballpoint marketing. So they pull data for me. They do all mailings or our, our first mail is going out beginning of January. So uh, we have everything built within recently. The most important thing for us is being able to make decision based on numbers. So we do about 20, 25 flips. I live in San Diego area. My project manager lives an hour north of me in Marietta. And my lead manager lives in uh, Canada. She has been with me for about six, five, six years. She used to live in Philippines. She moved to Canada for her higher education, still, still working for me. So that's my team, three people. We don't have anyone local. So for us, it's super, super important that we're able to make decisions based on data. Uh, so that's why, you know, when the way we built recently, it's like very KPI driven. Um, so the first thing you know, notice is, you know, when you come in, like you're tasked to you, how many new leads you have, how many open leads, how many buyer uh, inbox, you know, how many unread messages that you have. One thing that's super important is if you guys are not paying attention to this, as I highly recommend keeping an eye on this number, this is basically tells you any lead that you have in your pipeline that is being abandoned, meaning a lead would be abandoned if you don't have any drip assigned to it, if you don't have any task assigned to it, or if you have any leads that have no drip and no pending tasks. So for us in our company, we wanna make sure there's only leads in dead leads that are abandoned, basically. Anything we move over to dead lead, you know, we're not working on those, so those we're fine being abandoned. Anything else, it either needs to have a drip campaign or it need, either needs to have a pending task. If it doesn't have a drip and it doesn't have a pending task, that means nobody's working on it. So think about it. If you have a lead sitting in your warm lead, warm leads, you don't have a drip campaign. You don't have a pending task. That means no one is working on it. There's no way for, there's no accountability at that point where somebody is going to work on that lead. So you really want to make sure you have 
uh, you know, either you put the lead on a drip or you put the lead on a task and as, and this is real time. So if you go in, you update a lead and let's say you only have one task assigned to a lead, you go ahead and update that lead and that lead no longer has a task assigned to it, it will show up here. So you wanna make sure this is something you keep an eye on daily basis. We also email this information out to your, uh, to the main account holder um, and then also your team if you want, just so that you have at the end of the day or beginning of the day, kind of what happened in your business previous day. So really important if you guys are not paying attention to this is to keep looking into abandoned leads. And, uh, and I wanna make a quick update that's gonna be going live in every account is the seller appointment KPI it will all become clickable tomorrow. I have it in my test account. So if you are going on appointments, you know, whether it's um, in-person appointment, phone appointment, drive by, all of this data will become clickable. So you can click right here and see how many in-person appointment each person had, how many were kept, how many were not kept, how many they have, have an answer. So you can click on this and actually go into that particular lead that you have. So this is going live tomorrow. Um, and then you'll also be able to filter for a particular time period. So if you want to filter for a specific time period, let's say all the appointment that you had for last month, you can do that. It shows you the data for that. So another important thing to keep an eye on, the appointments that you're going on to see kind of how your appointments are going. Hey, John, you had a question? Yeah, so I had a question about the offers. <clears throat> do they show up on the, the end of day report? If we've previously made an offer on a property and then we go back and we increase the offer, does that show up as a new offer on the end of day report or will that show up or will it not show up at all? It does. I'm pretty sure it does show up. So if you go into one of the leads and you add an offer, then it shows up into your, your email that you get, uh, the daily email that you get. So daily email will show you all the appointments uh, that you had for the uh, appointment that you have upcoming for the day offers that you made, um, and then any abandoned leads that you had, and there's a bunch of other information that it shows in there, but it should, if it doesn't, let me know, then I can talk to my team and about adding that, but I'm pretty sure it does show that data. Okay. And then uh, if you make multiple offers on the same lead, it doesn't change on your KPI, on your marketing sheet, correct? It won't say that you've made three offers. Um, for example, if I correct. have 101 offers- correct. It just counts that one offer. Yeah, in okay. the KPI, it will only count it as one offer. Yeah. Okay. Good. So yeah, each fun. property you can maximum basically have one offer that it counts against that property. Perfect. Thank you. All right. And in this uh, KPI sheet, you can set your uh, goals for the year, how many deals you want to do, how much revenue you want to generate, and how much net income you want to generate. And I'll get into it why you know you really want to pay attention on some of these uh, numbers like ROI and stuff. And right here, it'll track how many, what's the marketing channel that you're getting most of your deals from? What's the marketing channel that's giving you the best ROI? Your cost per lead, cost per deal, how much money you spent in marketing, how much revenue you've generated, and what's your ROI? ROI is um, every dollar that you put into marketing, how much money is coming back. So for me, in this test account, for every dollar that I put in, I'm making $13.14 on my overall marketing spend. So really important, if there was one number that you really wanted to keep an eye on, I would say marketing ROI for, you know, for most real estate investors that are doing consistent deals, their biggest expense would be marketing or payroll. Generally, marketing tends to be the biggest expense that real estate investors have. And if you can, that for every, you know, one X that you can add to your marketing, it goes directly into your net income. So really important to keep an eye on your marketing ROI. Um, so that's, and then you can see your lead and deal flow for last 12 months. So you can hover on it, see how many leads you had in last month, how many appointments, offers, and deals. Uh, what are your top lead sources where you're getting most of your leads from? Marketing ROI, revenue versus spend. And then this is a very high level. If you want to dig deeper into it, you can go into the marketing tab. Uh, it just breaks down every single campaign that you're doing in your in your business. So these are all the marketing types that I'm doing. I can see for direct mail, I spent eighty five hundred dollars and made one hundred and eleven thousand. But I can see for every single campaign. So it shows me for probate list, I spent twenty five hundred, I made ten thousand. So my ROI is four dollars. Every dollar that I spend, I'm making four dollars. But if I look at the other marketing campaign, I only spent six thousand dollars, but I made one hundred and one thousand. So my 
ROI on that is $17, uh, almost $17. So that's kind of how you want to start looking at uh, your KPI for every dollar that you're putting in, how much money you're making, uh, how much money you're making into that. So especially as, you know, we're in more um, regulated environment with SMS, the incoming lead is going to start becoming more important. Inbound lead marketing channels, your PPC, paper lead, you know, your direct mail, it's going to start becoming more important depending on the market if you're doing TV ads, radio ads. So you really want to start looking into for every dollar that you're putting into each of the marketing channels, how much money you're making. And we have some investors that are doing, um, you know, radio ads on multiple uh, radio stations. So they'll set up separate marketing numbers for each radio station to see which exact radio station is giving them the highest ROI. Is it, you know, uh, is it station one or station two? Same thing on the TV ads that you're running. You know, you could use different phone numbers for different TV stations like CBS versus ABC, for example, and you can see which TV station is giving the highest ROI. Uh, so that's kind of what you want to double down on the marketing channel that's giving you the highest ROI. You want to double down on that. And the one that's not giving you a good ROI, you kind of want to start cutting that out. I would say if anything, if you're making less than 3x on your money, I would really consider like cutting that out of the business or look into what might be the reason why you're not making at least three X. So if you're spending, you know, hundred dollars in direct mail, you're only making $200. Uh, I would really start considering if that's the best marketing channel for you in your business. Again, you have to look at it over a long period of time. You don't want to look, do one direct mail drop and then, you know, not get any deal out of it and say, all right, direct mail doesn't work. At the end of the day, I can tell you looking at the data for, recently uh companies that are using recently every single marketing channel works every single like we have people that are doing youtube facebook all really super creative things if one thing that you can take away with marketing is every marketing channel works but stick with the one that uh pick a marketing channel that you're going to stick with for the longest period of time you don't you don't want to pick direct mail for one month then cold calling then sms then ppc you know, you don't want to keep rotating, then nothing is going to work. Pick the marketing channel, set your budget for a year and see, okay, this is my total spend that I can do in a year. And then spread that over 12 months and see how you want to spend that money. But at least you want to commit for minimum six months. If you're doing direct mail, I would say four mailings over a six months time period that you want to commit to. Same thing with cold calling. If you're doing at least commit to six months of calling before you can really go in and say whether that marketing worked or did not work. Okay. And then once you start doing that, then there's some other KPIs you can look into is how many leads do you need to get an appointment? How many appointments to before you make an offer? How many offers result in a deal? How many leads result in a deal? And how many appointments result in a deal? Uh, these are a little bit more advanced KPIs as you start scaling your business, you want to start looking into it. But at a minimum, minimum level, I would say at least look at cost per lead, cost per deal, and ROI. All right. So these are the three numbers, especially starting with ROI that you want to keep in mind um, and then look into kind of what's working, what's not working. And how you track that data is going into this last section, financials. You can link up your bank account by clicking right here, link bank account. It goes through Plaid integration. You can download all your transactions. Uh, so for me in my business, I don't even use QuickBooks. We have several other companies. Uh, that are not using QuickBooks, doing their full bookkeeping and accounting within recently. Uh, but at a minimum, minimum, I would recommend that you at least add your marketing numbers and your revenue numbers at a minimum to get the most value out of recently and then to be really efficient with your business. And how you do that is click on manual account, input some information, and kind of this is what it would look like. You can start inputting transactions here. So if I go right here, so if I go into my KPIs, into marketing, all right. So let's say if I spend so another- Sharad, So are you saying sure. we could just like make a fake account? Yeah, exactly. You could make a fake account um, and then just at a minimum, put your marketing and revenue numbers, right? Um, okay. We recommend linking it and then at least inputting your marketing and revenue numbers. So you have your other transactions. Whenever you decide, you can start inputting more of it. But at a minimum, you know, put your marketing revenue number. You could link your account and then from those, if you have 100 transactions, just input the ones that are marketing and uh, revenue related. But if not, add a manual bank account and then just go ahead and do that uh, like this. So let's say if I spend, uh, you know, money on 
my my marketing, let's say I spend another fifteen hundred dollars money out, and I can if I'm doing my uh, marketing expense, it's not going against a specific property; it's going against general business. My account would be direct mail, and right here it will pop up all the campaigns that you have running in your business. So if you don't select anything, by default, it will go into other campaign. But if you select this, it will go into other uh, this specific campaign. So if I go right here, it shows me that in probate, I spent $2,500. If I And you can attach receipts and other transaction memos. So you can do full bookkeeping right here. So if I go ahead and do this and I uh, refresh this page and I go back into my marketing, so this went up to 10,000 and this went up from 2,500 to 4,000 and it updated my cost per lead, cost per deal and ROI in real time. So that's, it does that automatically as you're thinking, as you're, you know, you're updating your books, as you're entering your revenue number, marketing number, it's happening in real time. So the way I have set up is my bookkeeper, uh, she's based overseas, she's inputting all the numbers once a week. I'll go in, I'll review the data. If she has any questions about the transaction, she'll just message me. I'll answer that question for her. And then that's it. We're done from there. And then if I go in, let me pick a transaction that I sold. Direct mail. Okay. So if I look at this, uh, this is, you know, in dummy account, I sold this property 1030 in North Rivera. So if I go in, let's say I made some money from this. And I'm going to go ahead and do, so I got ABC title company and I made uh, 25,000. This was money in, so it came through wire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that property, 1038 Mira, and then whatever income time it was. So I'm going to do, let's say this was fix and flip income. You could do wholesale fee, whatever it was. So if I do this, now the cool thing is I just told the system that, hey, I made $25,000 fix and flip income on this property. Now what happens is if I go into my KPIs, it's gonna take that number and it's gonna assign it to the right campaign. So the system knew that that $25,000 was from direct mail probate list and it assigned it to that and my cost per lead, cost per deal and ROI went up accordingly, changed accordingly based on. So as you start inputting, your marketing and revenue numbers, the revenue number you assign to the property, it would update accordingly to whatever campaign that you got the property from. So you don't have to go back, match the numbers. At the end of the day, the most important thing is you really want to know, especially as you start scaling your business. So imagine if you're doing direct mail, let's say you have a list of 10,000 people, you pull a list of absentee and you pull a list of probate. You have a total of 10,000 less, right? 6,000 in absentee, 4,000 probate. You buy a number and recently you send out direct mail, let's say it costs you $5,000 to mail to those 10,000 people. You get a deal out of it, you made $25,000. You're like, fantastic, I spent 5,000, I made 25,000, you're happy, you made five acts. But the question is, which list was it that you made the money? Was it your absentee list or was it your probate list? Like, did you really need to spend money on the absentee list? Maybe you got the deal from the probate list. So you could have only mailed to those 4,000 people and still made that $25,000, you didn't even have to mail to those 6,000 people. So that's why like the marketing channels that you're doing, especially direct mail, uh, cold calling, or as you, any expensive marketing channel that you're doing, you really wanna make sure you start separating by each list. So think of each list as uh, each marketing campaign as each motivation point. So if you have, you know, an absentee list, a probate list, I imagine, you know, you have the data in your market that it's the probate list that's really working. Now you're looking to scale into another market. You don't even have to, like you have the data to prove to yourself with confidence that if I'm going into a new market, I have the strategy down, I have the numbers to prove that I should start with probate list and not go after the absentee list. So that's what data does it. It gives you more insight into your business on what's working and what's not working. Like I have 48 different numbers that I use in my business from like, even when, you know, we used to do PPC, now we're running it on one website. We used to do PPC. I would run PPC on three different websites to see which one is working fine. You know, which one is working the best. Like on direct mail, uh, if I pulled a list, I would do absentee with unknown equity, absentee with unknown last year, and absentee with 30 years 
equity absentee with five years of ownership. So we would really dig deep into it. So I wanted to have the data to see which specific list is it that's working for me. So I can with confidence make a decision that, all right, I should double down on this marketing list and really with confidence cut this one out because I have data to prove that this is not working for me. Like we did the same thing with uh, paper lead. We uh, spent a budget or decided a budget of $10,000 on uh, fast home offers and 10,000 on need to sell my house fast. And we spent 10,000 on fast home offers, didn't get anything. So but then we could really cut that marketing channel out with confidence, knowing that we have data to prove that we spent 10,000, we didn't make any money out of it. It's time to back out of it. And we don't have any regret or remorse of, hey, we should go back and try that again. Maybe we didn't do that because we have data to prove that, you know, we we did that in our business. And then as you start accumulating, you know, all these transactions, then you can go into reports, so you have full reporting of general ledger, income statement, balance sheet, and uh, general entries. And then all of your PNL, it's built specifically for investors. So you can see, you know, how much money, if you were doing fix and flip income, if you're doing rental income, wholesale fee, you know, if you're doing different marketing channels, you can start seeing how much of your total income is coming from fix and flip versus wholesale fee, you know, and what's your breakdown of expenses, you know, in this, my dummy account, I can see 83% of my uh, total expenses, it made up of, um, you know, marketing. So 83% of total money that I'm spending in my business, my expenses, it's going toward marketing. So really want to make sure the money that I'm spending, I'm spending as efficiently as possible because that's going to be the biggest lever in my business to move the numbers in the right direction. So if from this 10,000, if I can be efficient and let's say I didn't, you know, I figured out that it's only the probate list that's working. So instead of 10,000, let's say I only need to spend 4,000 in my business. So the 6,000, it goes directly into my net profit. It's actually will be more than that. Because not only are you cutting back on the direct mail expense, you're also making your business more efficient. So you may not need as many other, you know, employees, for example, uh, because now you have less marketing that you're doing, more efficient marketing that you're doing. So you have other expenses that will go down to it with it. But at least at a minimum, that money that you save on marketing goes right into your bottom line. So that's that's the power of like really tracking your numbers and digging deep into kind of what's working in your business. And then going back to the KPI. You know, you want to look at your business on, let's say if you have a goal of doing seven figure revenue, that's fantastic. But you really want to ask, is the goal to really have a seven figure business? But what's the net income that you want to have? You know, you want to look at at a minimum, you want to shoot for like 30 to 40 percent net income, you know, after paying yourself a salary. So you want to set yourself a salary because if you step aside from your business and you were to hire someone to replace you, Right then is it, do you really have, and if you don't have any money left over after that, do you really have a business that you're running or you just have a job, you know, that you basically created for yourself? So you wanna look at the revenue that you have. Would you rather have a million dollar top line number and $100,000 bottom line net income? Or would you rather have a very efficient business where you're only making 800,000, but on that 800,000, you're making like 350, uh, 300 to $350,000 in, net income. So that's how you want to start looking at it or really look into your data on, especially on the marketing and on the, after that, you want to start looking into the, the payroll number. But at a minimum, you start with marketing and see which marketing channel is giving me the highest ROI and which one is not giving at least three X in your market and start questioning yourself. Is it really worth spending on that? If it's not giving you three X either, how can you make three X or how can, if you cannot make a 3X, how can you take that money and allocate it to other marketing channels that you have? Let's say if you're direct mail probate list that you're making 10X on, and you have another absentee list that you're making 2X on. I would rather take that money, put it towards probate, even if you cannot sustain that 10X on that probate, maybe it goes down to eight, but now you have 8X money that you're making in probate versus you know the inefficient marketing that you were doing in absentee you cut that out of your business so your business starts becoming more profitable more efficient in the long term all right what questions uh you guys have sure and I, I just want to compliment you on how well you know your business that, that's impressive oh, thank you i, I gonna... used to be an accountant so i think that has a lot to do with it, it just Whoa. especially when i moved from i used to live in chicago downtown chicago so that's how i started investing in indiana so I moved to Carlsbad in 2015 and being an accountant, you know, it was very important for me to be able to make the decision based on business. And that's kind mm -hmm. of why I started recently is knowing 
that I want to be anywhere in the in the world, but confidently make decisions about my business, what's working, what's not working. And then the only way to do that is based on data. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if someone comes in my team, whether in my house, putting business, property management, or recently, hey, we should do this. The question is, okay, do we have data to prove this? Mm -hmm. You know, we should do more of this. Do we have data to prove that? If Absolutely. we do, you know, then that's what we want to keep doing more of, right? And if we don't, then let's just cut back on that and just do more mm -hmm. of what's working rather than, you know, trying to make something more efficient. Uh, mm -hmm. If we have something that's already working and one thing that's not working, I would mm -hmm. much rather spend my resources on what's already working than try to figure out the stuff that's not working. That's maybe a later on hard problem to do, but the easy thing is low hanging fruit is, hey, let's put more money into what's already working. We have data to prove. Mm -hmm. We're making 10X on every dollar that we spend on probate list. If we're only mm -hmm. doing direct mail, let's just look at cold calling to the probate list. You know, those are the decisions I would start making because we have, we're already crushing it with probate list in mm -hmm. my direct mail. Can I do the same thing in cold calling, for example? That's, that, that's those cool. are the things I would start looking at. Okay. Well, all I can say, Jared, again, it, it's a pleasure and I'm grateful to be a part of the community now. And thank you. Man. you know, I, I've been using the software for about six months and I, I really trust in it. And uh, I look forward to getting my onboarding call because again, I'm, I kind of wasn't really uh, in the administrative position when I, we used the last. So um, I know I have a lot to learn, but it, it seems like it's going to give me a lot absolutely. of opportunities that yeah, I know. Man. Yeah, so definitely. Make, make use of the onboarding. It's free, unlimited. You don't have to pay for it. So just, you know, uh, book that. And then if you have any questions, you don't have to feel rushed. You can book another one for next week. Now we have we have enough people on our team. We usually have same day appointments available. So wonderful. All right, wonderful. Andre, go ahead. You had a question? Yeah. Hey, Sharad. Uh, yeah. Real quick on the leaderboard for the team. Um, I know you mentioned oh, yes, you sorry. were going to add a more... Uh, I have recommended a, a more disposition specific leaderboard. I right. wanted to see if you had an uh, thoughts yeah, on so that update on that at we're all. Making, so we're making an update to our API tomorrow, Andre, based on like basically the sheet that you sent me over, the Google sheet. Oh yeah, okay. The, everything is going to be in the payload with the update tomorrow. Oh wow, okay. You said yeah. tomorrow? Tomorrow, that, yeah. Awesome. So you'll be able to add, uh, you'll be able to add up to five uh, uh, web hooks mm -hmm. and and we'll be pushing a lot more data in the payload so everything that you have sent over to me everything will be in the payload uh, starting that's tomorrow. awesome okay yeah. but then on the the leaderboard itself there um do you have plans on updating that with you know uh, on the we, dashboard we do uh let me see if i have it right here okay so this is let me see. yeah so this is going to be coming out in q1 2024 uh, oh, wow. yeah so you'll be able to track all of this first time callers versus repeat callers you'll also be able to track for your team in incoming calls also how long they were on the call calls by hours so you can start seeing what time of the day what time like you know if you're doing tv ads radio ads direct mail cold calling yeah like what's the busiest time for you so if you're doing tv ads oh, like, awesome. you can really look into you can filter by campaign and say my TV ads, most of the calls I get are from, let's say, you know, eight to 10 in the evening. So you can spend more money in that TV ad for eight to 10. And then it also helps you with your staffing. If you notice you get really busy from like nine to, you know, three in the afternoon, for example, you get a bunch of incoming calls and incoming SMS, then you can really drill down and then just have more people available for that. And you can start managing, you can filter it by different time period, different campaign. So really yeah. drill down into it. Um, this is awesome, yeah. Yeah, so this will be coming out in Q1 of 2024. This is what we're working on right now. Same thing on the SMS. You can see how many calls you got, how many calls you made, average call duration, calls by campaign, uh, you know, whether the calls were answered live or were they, you know, not answered live, but they went to voicemail, first time versus repeat caller. So this will be a KPI that will be coming out and we'll be adding something for the, the Dispo side also. Nice, okay. And one more question on the KPI side thing on the marketing that you were just reviewing. Um, right. we I think currently we can't assign an expense to a property before it's been sold, right? And before we, it's yes. So if it's under contract, if you haven't closed the transaction, you cannot assign. We will be making that update. I know uh, a lot of other people have asked for that. If you write an earnest money check mm -hmm. or you spend some other money in due diligence. 
Uh, we will right, be yeah. doing that. The way the system works right now is if you move a property into, um, you know, into so, a transaction, that property automatically gets added. So you don't have to go in and right. add that. So it automatically does that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think we're looking into also any property that you move under contract also get added. So you can start assigning expenses to that. Got it. Okay. Yeah. yeah Cause the issue I see is like, we can't, we, like you said, earn his money check or, you know, right. we might make some super minor repairs. Yeah. We might spend $500 repairing something to, so we can increase the sales price, but then we can't track that in real time. Right. Yep. And sometimes yeah, no, the we're bookkeeping, that. yeah, we yeah. might have a closing today, but my bookkeeper is not going to update the system until like next week. And then I can't do exactly. my payouts and stuff. Exactly. Yep. No, we're, I know a few other, few other companies have asked for that. So we'll be adding that uh, next year also, where you can start assigning expenses while the property is under contract also. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. All right. Uh, Ricky, you have a question. Do you have an idea on how much maybe a bookkeeper would charge to do someone's book inside? We simply, I'm thinking 200. 200. So uh, Ricky, we offered this, uh, we've been offering this on, on beta version to some of our users. Uh, we're going to be actually launching it to everyone next month. Uh, and our price is $249 for anybody that's signing up right now. So if that's something you're interested in, um, you know, let me know. We've had three companies that we're offering it for and all three have been using it for about six months now. Super happy. We cleaned up their books, everything they can go in. We update their KPIs weekly. They can just go right here into KPIs. And it's everything is updated in real time for them. So they go and just track their numbers. So if you're something interested in it, just reach out to me, Sharad at resimply.com. And I can connect you with uh, the team member on our team who's helping uh, other companies do that. Uh, John, you had a question? Yes, yeah, so I know you mentioned in the past on the leaderboard, um, you would have it kind of like on the KPIs where if you refresh it, it doesn't reset all of the data. And right tell you what my end goal is i've got a tv in my office and i want to see my entire team's leaderboard real time so there's a chrome extension that will automatically refresh the page yeah i remember you mentioned that like every five to whatever you can set time on that yeah so you can ref you can refresh it like every every five minutes or so which is what my my goal would be and right. then be able to see my leaderboard in real time is that still coming or is that um going to be a, i think I think if you set it, if you set the time period, I believe, I know you're the one who gave that suggestion and it was a great idea. I think if you do that, it keeps it at that. Like if you refresh it, okay, not on the leaderboard. I know it does that on the KPI, but I'll I'll talk to my team on the leaderboard that it just keeps that time filter for you. And then um, a couple of other questions. Is there any way to set up once the property goes into um, accepted offer to have a projected revenue. So like if it's in the wholesale pipeline or, um, you know, even if it's in your, if it's in your active inventory right. and you probably don't want to count it until it's under contract on the, on right. the sell side, but is there any way to see projected revenue from, something that's gone into uh accepted offer or under contract on yeah that yeah that's something we'll be working on q2 of next year it'll be coming out we have some more uh pressing feature that a lot of people had been asking for i'll kind yeah. of give you a quick preview of you know what's going to be coming in um let me see where is i love your what's previews by the way sharon i know yeah i no, they get, get me really sense. excited <laughs> So, so we're going to be adding in Q1, we're going to be adding, you'll be able to add your inbox so you can start receiving incoming emails within recently. Um, so that, that's going to be coming out in Q1. So you can add your Gmail or Outlook email, and then you can start receiving, you can start assigning each of the uh, specific email to, um, to a lead that you have, but email from vendor and everything you can start attaching to your activity log. And then this is the, the biggest one that we have basically advanced calling features. Uh, so if you have an ongoing call, you can listen into the call, you can whisper to the team member, or you can barge in. So this is something we're already working on. This, this will come out hopefully next month. Um, so we're working on this. Uh, yeah, so you, this is going to be one uh, big feature. And then notification will be will start becoming real time. So as you 
get a text or a call kind of similar to John, what you were saying with the leaderboard, you won't have to ref refresh your page. It will automatically update. If you get a text, you know, you could be on any page in your browser, you get a text from any lead. It'll just pop up on the top, right? You can just reply to it and swipe it out. And then that's so you can just go back to the lead. If they reply back again, it'll just pop up without you having to refresh. So that's going to be coming. And then the search will be, it'll become global search. So anything that you search in the system, it's going to search the entire uh, database that we have. It'll find any matching leads, list stacking, properties, appointments, notes. It'll look through everything. Files, whatever you have, it'll look through the entire database and find you whatever we match. So, um, and then other- so, um, so notifications, you said next month? Notification is Q1. This will, this will be next month. This call logs, okay. the updated call logs, this will be next month. We're already working on it. And then the email inbox, we've started working. Uh, notification is going to be later in Q1 is when, no, this is a little bit bigger update that we have to do. Um, but yeah, this will, this will all be coming out in Q1, but in different uh, uh, phases. And then this will be basically kind of, you know, informing you guys of what features you've utilized, what not, and then you can click and watch the video and then landing pages for your PPC, uh, specific landing pages on the website. So if you wanted to run an ad for, for example, you know, PPC ad just for targeting foreclosure, you know, targeting people that are in touch, so then you'll have specific landing pages within the website. So you can start running some uh, PPC ads. So that's, this is going to be coming out. And then the, the KPI that I showed you on the incoming call, that's also going to be coming out. This is also going to be coming out in Q1. Uh, so this is a little bit bigger update because we'll start tracking your incoming calls also. They'll go into the leaderboard, not just outbound call tracking. We'll, we'll start tracking the activity for each team member by incoming calls also. Uh, but tomorrow we have the the update going live with the webhook. Uh, so we're pushing a lot more data in the webhook. And then anytime you receive a picture from any lead, it will automatically start saving into files. So you won't have to go in, download, and then re-upload. If you if a uh, lead sends you a picture by text, it will automatically go into the file section. So you won't have to uh, download and re-upload anything. So that's going to be coming tomorrow. Uh, there's a couple of other small updates that are going live tomorrow. I think this one where the seller appointment KPI, this will all become clickable. This is going live tomorrow. Uh, and there's a couple of other changes, minor changes that I'm not uh, remembering right now that are going live tomorrow. And when you uh, mentioned the webhook uh, being opened up, does that mean you can push data out from Mari simply? You can already do that. You can already do that, but we have some companies uh, that, you know, uh, we have a team that's doing, they have like five or six acquisition manager and they require, they're doing, spending a lot of money in PPC. So they want a lot more data in the web, you know, uh, the web hook. So for example, with the update tomorrow, we'll also push notes in the data. So if you have through web hook, you know, if you need to create, or if you move a property to under contract, We'll also be, we'll also export the notes with it and even the questions that you have in the leads. So this will any questions that you're answering right here, this will also become part of the the webhook data starting tomorrow. So there's a lot, and then Andre gave me a big sheet of uh, data that he wanted to track. Like for example, all the offers that you're making in your business, all the offers that you make, there'll be. So if you have a bunch of offers that you make right here, all of these offers will will push into your data. So you can like manage, create your own KPIs if you wanted to do that. So there's there's a pretty big update with the KPI, uh, API coming tomorrow. Thank you but for you doing that so quickly too, Shara. That's yeah, absolutely. Huge yeah. Now, there are a couple of other couple of other companies that that asked us for that. Um, so yeah, it just made sense to do that. So you'll be able to add up to five integrations um, and then every integration will get a bunch of data, like all the notes that you have, all these questions that you have, all of that will be part of, even tags and everything will be part of the payload starting tomorrow. Oh, all right. That's Brian really has cool. a question. Do you believe SMS is still viable? Uh, Brian, I'm not doing it. I I gave up on it about a year, year and a half ago, if not longer. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, like with all the regulations around SMS, I don't want to risk getting shut down because... Mm -hmm. When you sign up, you know, you do A to B 10 DLC, you're registering your company with the carriers. So mm -hmm. 
if you you know you register with uh, through pre simply then you use let's say i think you you were talking about smart um launch control for example if you're mm -hmm. in the same company and you're doing a lot of spam on through launch control you know you definitely get affected on launch control but there's a chance if you keep doing it you could get shut down entirely across all platforms for me it's not worth it if i were going to do it i would set up a separate entity so think of your business as two separate entities one mm -hmm. would be operational entity that's what you use for re simply and one would be your marketing entity that's what you use for just for sms completely separate businesses so if you were to get affected it only affects your marketing company it does not affect your operational company that you have uh, okay. so if if i were going to do it i would do two separate companies two separate a to b to dlc registration separate companies and then do it um i i i'm not doing sms i don't know other people on the call if they're doing it if they want to chime in but i'm personally not doing sms yeah it's okay. getting just more more and more difficult um you know at some point it's like you're just trying to figure out a way to get around the carriers. You know, the, the carriers will get keep getting smarter and they'll just eventually shut down. Like we're noticing uh, a lot of the SMS that don't go through, uh, the, the number one reason for SMS not going through is, you know, the the carriers are filtering more and more messages. Mm -hmm. um, like even like something the other day, a user messaged me and said, hey, I just texted back, you're welcome. And my message didn't go through like, sometimes the algorithm will go a little bit too far. So we mm -hmm. have to report, you know, reach out to a provider and say, hey, you know, why did this message get uh, blocked? It was just, thank you, you're welcome. Uh, so then they'll look into it, but you have to be very careful with uh, with SMS. Okay. All right, th thank you for mm -hmm. sharing, man. Thank you. Absolutely. Where can we see our uh, response rate on uh, our, our deliverability rate for SMS and then our, our assembly account? Uh, I mean, you'll see in each of the lead that you have, each of the SMS that you're sending out, you'll see whether it was delivered. If it's not delivered, it'll, it'll say not delivered. When you hover on it, it'll show you the reason. But with this update that we have, it'll show you the actual delivery rate that you have. So it'll start showing you the actual delivery. But what I would do is I would go into my call logs and then filter it for the outgoing SMS and then see whichever one was not delivered. What was the reason for it? Can you also see what numbers are, are I, I know like there's a way of telling what the pickup rate is for your number. Is there a way to see that just if I, even if I calculate it manually? Uh, what do you mean? I mean, you can see right here in manage number, which one are 10 DLC linked or not. Mm -hmm. uh, now it does that for your toll free also. It'll show you now the toll free verification is also required. So it'll show you whether it's linked or not linked. The toll free verification is pretty much the same process as A to B 10 DLC. It's not exactly that, but it's pretty similar. I mean, that's what we anticipated uh, earlier this year. It was only a matter of time before toll-free verification would be required. And that's it's required now. You pretty much have to go through the same process. Uh, and you cannot text without being verified. And you, you can check all of that by going into manage number. And every single number will show whether it's linked or not linked. And if you want to see status of 10 DLC, you can just click right here and it'll just show you uh, if it's 10 DLC, the status of that. I mean, this is a test account, so it doesn't register for that. But yeah, I would look into this 10 DLC status right here. Okay. So if it's linked, then you can send out messages. If it's not linked, your SMS will not go through from these numbers. Cool. All right. Kid has a question. If you're cold calling and sending mail to the same campaign list, can we see the breakdown in this dashboard of how many leads came in from each channel for the same campaign? Sorry. Uh, so Kate, what you would do is if you are sending, if I understand correctly, let's say if you have a probate list that you're sending direct mail to and you have a probate list that you are cold calling to. So you would just use basically two marketing number, one for direct mail probate list, one for direct uh, cold calling probate list. And then you would keep your expenses and revenue separately. And then you'll be able to track right here. So for example, cold calling probate list, uh, how many leads did I have from How many of leads became qualified leads? How many appointments did I get? How many offers did I make? So you will be able to track based on each tracking numbers for different lists that you have. So if you're doing probate, direct mail, probate, cold calling, use two separate tracking numbers and then spend, uh, and then you'll be able to track your activity, your leads, appointments, offers, and everything for each of the campaign. Let me know if I missed anything on that question. 
Daniel has a question. Is cold calling the best way to start generating leads? Uh, Daniel, I, I would say, like, honestly, it's whatever you feel comfortable with, whatever marketing channel you can stick with for at least six months is what I would do. It's based on your budget. It's based on, honestly, even the, you know, the way I look at it, it's based on the personality. Like if I were starting um, and I had to cold call, I would not do it. I just, I know I would not feel comfortable with it. So for me, just given my personality, I just feel most comfortable with direct mail. That just, that would be my default going to direct mail. It's sort of like a good mix of inbound, outbound marketing. You know, where you send direct mail, people call you back and it's sort of, they have some motivation. That's why they're calling you. So that's what I would feel comfortable with. But a lot of people I know are really crushing it with cold calling. But I would say, pick the right list and then stick with it for at least four to six months before you can say, you know, whether it worked or it did not work. Hey, Parker, you have a question? Yeah, how's it going? So uh, I had actually two questions. So with sure. the SMS, if it says just sent, does that mean it was not delivered? Um, most likely it was delivered. So the way okay. it works is when you send an SMS, our carrier gives us either it was not delivered it was delivered or it was sent. Not delivered means okay. it failed. Delivered means they have a confirmation that it was delivered. Mm -hmm. Sent means that it was sent from our provider, but we did not get a confirmation back from the recipient. Generally happens with a VoIP number that gotcha. they don't they don't respond. They don't con give a confirmation on their delivery. But for all uh, yeah, so you're saying with like like mean, Android phones or what's VoIP again? I forget. And like a Google Voice number, for example. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So if you send it to a cell phone number, most of the times, vast majority of the time, you would get a response back from the provider that, hey, the message has been received. So we can show delivered. But if you okay. send a message to Google Voice, like the lead is using a Google Voice number, we don't get a confirmation back from Google Voice, for example, or one gotcha. or, you know, the numbers gotcha. like that. Yeah. I mean, some of them now, like some leads, it'll say delivered. And then, you know, next, the next few will say sent. Right. But not to Yeah, I mean, if you if you want to send an email to support it recently, and then we can look into it and see what might be going okay. on specifically with that. Yeah, okay. Some of the messages I'm noticing are also getting um also getting blocked because of A to B 10 DLC. Uh, okay. So yeah, if you want to send, send it to uh support at recently. Okay. Or you can yeah, actually send it. it to me and I can I can look it up. So I'm gonna put my email address. So if you send it to me, uh just just give me your. Just um, give you one lead that that maybe yeah, I just saw give me that one was. Lead. Okay. Or just give me your your um account your account email address with recently, and then I can go in and I can see if I'm noticing a bunch of emails are not going through or not. Okay, sounds good. Okay. And then other question: Have you guys uh looked into action based tasks at all, or is that coming with calls and texts? Like the task does not disappear until they actually call it in the system and then it goes away or actually text it in the system. I mean, we have open leads for it. So if a lead calls in or sends a text message, they will stay an open lead until you call them or text them back or you manually But you can close in. it too. You manually. can close it manually also. Right? Yeah, I'm just it. saying like, you know, my sales manager I have now, I don't have to worry about it with, but... When I do bring new people on, obviously I am going to monitor everything they do, but right. just another way of making sure everyone's getting their stuff done. I was just right. wondering so, if that, that was ever suggested. So if you receive a call or a text from a lead, it creates a task? More so you create a drip campaign that makes the, makes the sales manager call them every day and that task doesn't go away unless they call. Them. Obviously where it's set up right now, you can click off a task whether you call them or not. You'd have to manually go in and make sure that they call them and the task right. was checked off. So more so, I know some CRMs that I've worked with um, in the past have that, which not a huge deal. It just saves a little right. bit of time, but just wondering if that was ever suggested or brought up. I think one thing, I don't know if you're using this or not, it, it you can go into any campaign and then do drip automation. I don't know if uh, this would help. So anytime a lead comes in, you can have it automatically put on a drip campaign. Yeah, no, I do. Yeah. Okay. I do. Yeah. No. But you're saying like if a lead calls and sends a text message that it gets put on a drip campaign based on- No, that. no, I'm just yeah. saying that if I assign a task 
for that my sales manager to call lead right he could go in and check it off and it's done and he may have not actually called them right. not worried i'm not worried about that right now with my current guy right. but when you bring in new people like i've had people it happened in the past i've fired some people where they said they were calling and they weren't and then i you know Got eventually it. realized it it's more so like that task isn't be able right, to be right, manually right. checked off you get what i'm saying right yeah, I mean, I think a lot of that you would be able to track with this, right? With the, I mean, the outbound call, you can already track in the leaderboard. So you can actually see how many calls they made, how many SMS they sent out, what was yeah, the average call duration, sure. total call duration. Uh, with this, you'll also be able to track incoming activity. You know, what happens is, let's say if your lead, you know, if one of your sales agent was on the phone for like a couple of hours on incoming calls, it's not going to be reflected on leaderboard right now. But with this update, you can see, what is the average call duration on incoming calls and outgoing calls? Yeah, uh, yeah. But for you, you know, I would start looking at the leaderboard and start looking at like yeah, no, I do that. activity and then average call. If someone says, hey, I called, you can see, oh, I see you had zero yep. calls today. Like how can you say you made a call or why are there calls only for like, you know, less than a minute each of them on yep, average? Yeah, for sure. You know? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's all, all right, I got. Yeah, Brian? You have a question? Uh, yes, sir. And thank you for, for answering all my questions today. So one last question. It's not, it looks like we have a great group of people here. Uh, I mean, I'm sure they have all kinds of experiences, all kinds of backgrounds. I'm just kind of wondering, as far as, you know, the Resimply community is concerned, are you, are you trying to, you know, keep things specifically as far as, you know, everything as our business with Resimply? Are you, are you, um, are you by any chance doing any subgroups? You know, if we, if we want to learn more, if we want to kind of share more what we're doing, we, you know, we what for Facebook, marketing. We have a Facebook group, uh, which is pretty active. So I don't know if you're already part of it, but I would join that. Uh, but we bring on, you know, uh, usually most of these calls that we do weekly, we have a guest come in on the call. Mm -hmm. uh, we were supposed to have someone come in, but we uh, honestly looked at their social media and they were talking about something not related to real estate. So we decided to not bring them on, but most mm -hmm. are like John was on a call a couple of weeks ago. Um, you know, so we bring on people that are doing deals using Resimply, um, but it doesn't, they don't necessarily, the people that we bring on, they don't necessarily have to be Resimply users. We bring on people that we think will add value to the community. Okay. But yeah, if you join our Facebook group, you can definitely meet other uh, subgroup of users, you know, with okay. like anything in uh, particular. <laughs> So the biggest thing that stresses is, is you very much are focused on growing the community and having the community share and, you know, how, you know, why some people are being successful, why are they not? Um, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like we look at, you know, there are different like moving pieces with this business, right? You'll have data, marketing, sales operations. So we'll bring in people with different, you know, expertise like John, uh, you know, on this call came on a couple of weeks ago, like he has a really good sales process. So he talked about that. And it's an open, you know, call. Anybody can jump on. Like even this call, it's not just open for Resimply people. It's open for anyone that wants to join in. But majority of the people that join in are Resimply users. users. Majority of the people that we bring on as guests are Resimply users. But they don't okay. have to be. Like our goal is to add value to the community, not necessarily, you know, it's not, this is not like a sales call for us. Uh, this mm -hmm. is just, you know, value add call for us. But mm -hmm. I'm just sharing kind of what I'm doing in my business on this. Uh, but you know, other people might be doing something different, but I'm just saying, Hey, this is what I'm doing in my business and it's working well. Okay. Wonderful. Well, I, I think this is, this is a wonderful community to be involved in. So I really am Absolutely. excited. Thank you. Cool. Uh, is it Jamie or Jaime? Hey, hey Sherrod, it's Jaime. How are you? Jaime. Good, man. How are you? Good, good. Um, I, you were there in the Fresno event for like Dean yes. Rogers and them. Yeah. yeah I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there in April also. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, that, that's like yeah. my market with Dean. Kind of got pushed nah, through because cool, of them. Cool, cool. Through, through yeah, simply, but... another event. I'm going to be there. Yeah. But I want to just ask really quickly, Um, would we ever be able to track like talk time per day? Just just curious uh, to see if that's something that we can possibly track when. So you can track outgoing right now, outgoing track time per day by just going right here and filtering for time period. With this update that we have coming next quarter, you'll be able to track per individual incoming and outgoing. Uh, so with this right now, you can only track outgoing activity. With this, you'll be also be able to track incoming activity also for each user. And you can and do you... per day also. Oh, gotcha. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. Filter per day. I had one yeah, last so question. It'll have, it'll have filters like, uh, so for example, we're going to add time filters of yesterday, 
last week and you know some other specific time filters that you want to look at on a regular basis gotcha so what i actually wanted to ask you too is i know for like the i'm looking to try to scale an operation a little bit more um this this year this upcoming year and i guess a feature that i really wanted to try to add on because like for our lead managers and acquisition managers and that sort of thing is for i guess like is there any way we can probably pay an additional fee or anything to just get access to i guess those incoming calls like through, directly through the crm or that sort of thing because for now it goes directly through the phone numbers if that makes sense Uh, what do you, what do you mean? Like, you know how like, like an in web app feature where you answer like live calls. Like I know it's, Yeah, we, it look, it looks like it's only for the enterprise plan, huh? That you can do that no, or you like can, that. you, it's an add on also. You can add it to, uh, other accounts also. So you can answer calls on the web or on the app also. So it doesn't have to be forwarded to a phone number. Well, even if I'm like a pro member, which is like the one ninety nine, I believe it is per month. Right. I, I don't know if it's included in that or not, but it, it's an add-on that, and the add-on allows for every single team. It's not paper seed, it's for the entire team. Uh, so you can add that for the entire team. Yeah, because I know there's like a beginner. I think there's a pro, and I think Yeah, there's yeah. like a business. I'm in, I'm in the middle one. I was gonna. Yeah, I, prep. It's probably yeah, I don't not think on it that. includes, yeah, yeah, I don't think it's on that. It's on the enterprise plan, but you can add on any the the basic and the pro also. You can just add that feature and it gives access to everyone on your team. Gotcha. But it have to be like the, like the business, right? Like the one all the way in the, I guess the end, like No, the no, four no, you don't no, you can just you can just add, I think it's like fifty bucks a month. You can just add the in app answering feature. Oh, gotcha. I didn't know you could Yeah, do yeah. that. That's Yeah, something yeah, you I didn't can do that. Yeah, you can do you can just add the in app answering uh in in um just on any plan also. So you don't have to upgrade to the uh the enterprise plan. Yes, right. Okay. What Okay. I the can I ask your team, I guess, about that. I never knew you could even do that, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Just Send reach an out. email to like support at Reese simply. I'll put it in the actually, I'll just send it to you. So I'll put it in the chat. Yeah, you can just send an email and they'll walk you through on how you can uh like add that feature. Awesome. Thanks, Shira. Okay, sure. John, you have a question? Yeah, it was just do we get charged for the ones that are undelivered uh I on believe text? Yeah, I believe so because it's like our provider charges us and then like we just charge. I mean, it's like, yeah, once it basically type a message, send it, whether it gets delivered or not, I think there's a fee from the carriers. Okay, cool. Right. Thank you. All right. Uh, David, do you have a question? What's the best way to do agent outreach? Do we just add agent info instead of owner info and cold calling? Yeah, I would just do that. Uh, you could just add agent info instead of uh, owner info. Like I would, because so we're, we're, buying properties on MLS. So for me, in that case, the agent is the seller. So we would just put agent as the seller and then just do an outreach to them based on that. Yeah, so I would just do that. Uh, just consider for, for that purpose, your agent is your seller. Or another thing you can do is you can upload your, your agent list right here into uh, the buyer's agent section and then email them you know, uh, like agents will be a little bit more receptive to email. So you, it'll be easier to find email address for the agent. So you can do outreach from here. When you're adding, you can filter for the contact type to be um, agent and then just email them or send them text message or call them from within the system. And then once they become a lead, then add them, like once they have a lead, then add them into the lead and add them as a seller. Uh, Ricky, we don't have a link, but if you send an email to me, uh, we're actually working on the landing page right now. It should be ready in a couple of weeks. But if you send an email to me, I'll I'll connect you with the person that we have on our team uh, who can help you with bookkeeping. Andre, would can you want to expand a little bit on this question? Do you have a best practice sheet for SMS deliverability? Like what uh, you could be doing not to get blocked by carriers? I think we added, let me see. So one thing would be, I'm going to put this in chat for everyone. Uh, these are the words you want to avoid. Do not get marked as spam. Uh, you know, I mean, this is like very broad list, but for real estate investor purposes, like cash offer quick, you know, those are some of the trigger words that will really get your messages flagged by carriers. But look at this, go through this and think of it like this. If you were to get audited by a carrier and they asked you, hey, can you show us a proof that you're only texting people that have opted in? Like 
do you have a way to prove that? You know, make sure you have, like, this is my website. Uh, make sure you have, you know, this opt-in language. I mean, now, you know, pretty simply, you can have it checked off. So somebody doesn't have to, you don't have to have it. Uh, somebody doesn't have to check it. You can leave it as checked. Uh, that makes it easier. That's like one less step that the leads have to do. But make sure you have this. Say that, say that again. We can we can have it checked already. You, you can. Um, if once it's approved, you can have it checked. So this is what I provided. It's not. It's not really technically required to have this unchecked, right? Uh -huh. But just the the safe approach is when you're submitting it, leave it unchecked. Once you get approved then you can leave it checked. So my website, now it just always shows checked and I notice my PPC leads uh, are going up. Interesting. So I would I would just, when you're getting approved, I would leave it unchecked. Approval right, right now taking about like a week, honestly, if once everything is good, it's taking less than a week. But let's just see if it takes like a week or two weeks. Once you get approved, then you can leave it checked. So the way, yep. so we added this feature in recently, like it, it just, you can just have it default as checked. That's why listening to your meetings are so beneficial all just getting one nugget can make a huge yeah difference. yeah you can again it's based on what we were told by our provider so i have it minus checked and i notice i'm getting more leads from ppc okay yeah, which would make sense you know it's like one less step that people have to do absolutely yeah cool all right any other questions you guys have would we get this e this recording in our emails yeah actually you know, you can go right here all, and then all the previous calls that we have, they get dropped right here. Uh, doo -doo -doo, I'm going to put it in the chat. I'll share this also really quick. So if you go to help.resimply.com, uh, this is like all our, you can find answers to everything. We, we update these on a regular basis, but all the mastermind calls, if you click on mastermind calls, all the calls go right here. Uh, so it would be, it would come here in a day or two. But this is the one we did with John uh, a couple of weeks ago. Really good call. So all the calls that we do, they get dropped in right here. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Sure. All right. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of the week. And I'll see you guys on the next week call. Thank you. Bye.